Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another exciting edition here of the Reality of Wrestling. My name is Kirby Carrion. I am the historian here for Reality of Wrestling. To get us started here tonight, we are going to be seeing Clay Roberts defend the television championship against the young gun Chandler Hopkins in what promises to be an exciting 10 minutes because that's going to be the time limit for that title match. As well in our main event, we are going to be seeing JP Harlow take on Izzy James once again after their match last time tore the house down here at the World Gym Arena. But I am also being told that we have exciting footage from a meeting between Sharmel Huffman and Booker T that will change the complexion of Reality of Wrestling. And we are going to show you that in its entirety next week here for the Reality of Wrestling. But without further ado, let's get started here tonight for the television championship, Clay Roberts against the young gun Chandler Hopkins. Well, we saw the young gun, and the last time we saw him, trying to carry on, he had a Texas championship opportunity. And you can tell the powers that be see a lot in the young gun. Because tonight he gets a shot at the Reality Wrestling Television Championship. This is going to be a very exciting contest. A true clash of styles as the high-flying, the young gun, Chandler Hopkins, will go one-on-one -on -one with the best technician in Texas, Clay Roberts, for the TV Championship. As I said, it's going to be a true clash of styles. I hope that Ch uh, Chandler Hopkins did his homework here because he is in the ring not only against a magician, but as I said, the best technician in Texas. You see Clay Roberts pointing up to the screen up here. The time is on the screen, and this is for the TV championship. Ten minutes on the clock as soon as the bell rings. There's our opening bell and our timer has started. There is a 10 minute time limit to this affair. Oh, look at this, Clay Roberts. Smile on his face and you can tell what he's doing here, Kirby. He's trying to kill time as much as possible. I mean, it's a smart idea. If you have 10 minutes and the 10 minutes expire, it goes to a draw, therefore you keep your championship, but I would think as a champion, you would want to go out there and prove that you're the best. So keep winning. Well, the thing that proves that you're the best, Kirby, is by being the champion. So if you can retain that title, you continue your run here in the reality of wrestling as one of these top stars. 
one of the best. And some chain wrestling here in the early going, something that both men are very good at, but you also think that that hurts the challenger here. Chain wrestling is slow and methodical, and you don't have the luxury of time as a minute has already expired. As right now Chandler Hopkins showing us what he's got here, Brad, you're right. Chandler Hopkins has got to be the one to beat the champion. As we see countless times in MMA, you gotta beat the champion. You can't just coast because that could cost you the entire fight. Now with this too, you have to think, with Clay being the best technician in Texas, right now Chandler Hopkins is showing his entire hand and Clay Roberts is going to be able to find a counter to almost anything that Chandler Hopkins throws at him. Chandler Hopkins, now look at that. Clay Roberts holding onto the leg there. And again, just trying to buy time off the clock. Because at the end of the day, Clay Roberts doesn't have to beat Chandler Hopkins. Chandler Hopkins has to beat Clay Roberts. Now that's actually what I was gonna ask. Do you think that puts more pressure on Chandler Hopkins knowing that he is running up against the clock having to defeat Clay Roberts? I think absolutely. That, that is a lot more pressure on the challenger as two minutes in this contest has expired. See there in the corner of your screen, the clock here for the television championship contest at Summer of Champions 8. This is a banner event here for the reality wrestling and we're going to see that main event as this television special comes to you over the coming weeks cover one two and a kick out as this tv special comes to you on our local affiliate here in houston the cw 39 k-i-a-h oh and frequencies around this great country and of course the nearly 600,000 subscribers to the Reality Wrestling YouTube channel. Is Chandler Hopkins able to get that roll up roll here? Roll up one, two. Very smart plan from Hopkins to go for, for repeated, two repeated pinfall attempts. That takes a lot out of your gas tank. And if you're going to beat Clay Roberts in 10 minutes, that's how you want to do it. Oh, look at that. Clay Roberts running away. And again, milking the clock even signaling to the audience. I'm buying my time. Clay Roberts trying to find a way to get inside the ring, but Chandler Hopkins just trying to cut him off at any turn here. But look at this, he's got the leg. I think he just raked the eyes there, Brad. Oh, oh wow, look at that. Clay Roberts in. And now Chandler Hopkins in a bad way, going for a cover here. One, two, a kick out from the challenger. A strong kick out as he just rolled right over the champion, almost to a vertical base. But now that big European uppercut there from Clay Roberts, just rocking. Oh my God, Chandler Hopkins, maybe to another dimension. Taking a look at the clock here, we're almost 30 seconds to the halfway point of this matchup, Brad. And right now it seems like Clay Roberts' strategy is working. Well, we know you can win a match in under 10 minutes, but can you win a match against Clay Roberts? In under 10 minutes, Chandler Hopkins is going to try to scoop and a slam there. It's a much needed offense. Oh, look at that. Standing moonsault misses. The best technician in Texas with a big European style up cup one, two, and almost had him. And look at that, the transition from the kick out right into that armbar style maneuver there from Clay Roberts. That is why he is known as the magician, Brad. Absolutely. Chandler Hopkins trying to get the Rogue Nation behind him, but Clay Roberts is just shutting that down entirely right now. And he's just twisting that arm in a way that it's not meant to be bent. Here 
they, here they come, the Row Nation starting to get behind Chandler Hopkins. Hopkins with those low shots to the abdomen of Clay Roberts, breaks free. Roberts over the top rope. And look at this, oh! That shot once again to the midsection from Hopkins. And now a big slap from Clay Roberts. Just seems to have incensed Chandler Hopkins. He's got to watch out not to get disqualified here. Big roundhouse kick misses. Chandler Hopkins gets the enziguri though. Both men are down. And we've got three and a half minutes to go. Three and a half minutes. Is it enough time? Look, this is only milking more time off the clock. And Clay Roberts wouldn't mind a double count out. He would remain the champion. That is what we call the champion's advantage as Chandler Hopkins here. Big Grand Husky goes on, misses, but able to get that NC Gary to the side. And look at this. Chandler Hopkins coming alive here. Great fall on there to the corner. Suplex roll through. Clay Roberts, no counters. Oh, look at that. He caught it. He caught the kick into the ankle lock. Hopkins flips the momentum over. And once again, Hopkins showing off his athleticism and his speed into the cover here. One, two, about two minutes remain. About two minutes remain right now. Here's your two minute warning. Chandler Hopkins needs to find a way to get this win. You gotta wonder if Chandler Hopkins perhaps getting frustrated over the fact that Clay Roberts has been milking the clock when the match first started, and if that's gonna come back to bite him as this clock is slowly winding down. Well, in reality wrestling normally with most championships, we go one fall to a finish. There must be a definitive winner. But in this case, it's a time limit. It's the TV title. You have to be able to alter your strategy. Chandler Hopkins knew that coming in, but it's one thing to try to get mentally pre prepped for a cover. One, two. It's one thing to get mentally prepped for it. It's another when you're inside the ring and trying to fight against an opponent and a clock. Oh my gosh. Nasty landing from Clay Roberts. Wait a minute, there's a minute remaining. We've got 60 ticks of the clock left and that's gonna be it. Unless Chandler Hopkins can get Clay Roberts back into the ring right now. You have 45 seconds. Chandler Hopkins made maybe a bit of a, a, a mistake there by putting Clay at Roberts to the outside. And these two still fighting on the outside. 30 seconds. And maybe the adrenaline just was too much for Chandler Hopkins. He still has time, it's 15 seconds left. And look at this here, Chandler Hopkins, the oh, high oh, oh, to the outside. But wait a minute, five. Four, three, Trying to get him back in the ring, but I don't think he's gonna be able to do it. Oh my gosh, there's the time limit draw. It's less about the fact that he found a way to win rather than Chandler Hopkins didn't pay attention to the clock as he took that dive. He tried to get him back in the ring, but he didn't have enough time, Brad. And I say win, and that's probably the wrong word to use because Clay Roberts, this is a time limit draw. Neither man won, but still the champion. And I don't think this 
the last time we're going to see these two bow down for the TV title. Clay Roberts says, I'm done. I have 10 minutes of work that I have to put in. He got his TV time that was worth gold, Brad. That's exactly what it is. That time was worth its weight in gold. And gold is still around the waist of Clay Roberts at Summer of Champions. For over 13 years, the King of Solar Screens has been an industry leader, and we proudly use 100% American-made products. Home of the $55 any size, any color solar screen. Well, what about arches? $55. What about circle? $55. What about rectangles? $55, $55, $55. Any size, any color, install free. The King of Solar Screens, on time, every time. Now, can you dig that, sucker? Expecting Culture Inc. But here comes Lights Camera Faction. We saw that they were looking for an opportunity and they went to the man himself, Booker T. And that is why they're here. We were expecting Culture Inc. But this is clearly not Culture Inc. These aren't the former tag team champions. No, this is Lights Camera Faction. We saw Ice Williams and Action Braxton in that King of the Summer Battle Royal. And now we're seeing the full lights, camera, action. They roll deep, Kirby Carry On. They do, they really seem to be a tight group here, but this is kind of how we saw Coltrane make their debut just a few months ago. They came in here with a lot of, you know, pop and circumstance, if you will, and then they managed to capture the tag team gold from Legion. Maybe perhaps we're seeing another rise of another prominent tag team here in the reality of wrestling. Well, it never hurts to have backup. Texas City, you booed me in ice when we got thrown out of the Battle Royal. Hey, you think that's funny? You think it's funny to boo the faction? Hey, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Hey, because you are looking at the new leading role players at Reality of Wrestling. I'm talking about Ice Williams. He is Watson, Fresco Matic, and Action Braxton. Oh, yes. Who is that? Well, this is who we were expecting as Culture 8 making their way down to the ring right now. Well, there they are. Eli Malik and Nick Holiday. They look like they got some work to take care of. I don't think they appreciate lights, camera, fashion. Trying to stick their nose in the business. Of course, we know these are former reality wrestling tag team champions. Had quite the rivalry against Fly Death. Had uh, possibly what many people are calling the match of the year against Fly Def in that incredible ladder match for the championships. As I'm trying to figure out here who is going to be mixing it up with Cold Drink as it looks like Lights Camera Faction are getting ready for a contest. Oh, what, y'all got something to say? 
Y'all got something to say? Look who we got here. Look who dragged out of the desert in Las Vegas. Lights, camera, faction. That's right. We didn't have beef for a while. Look, you trumped us. You got us. You came out. They introduced us. Here y'all are. But guess what? This ain't Las Vegas. This is H Town, baby. So I think it's time we chop and screw your asses right here, right now. Oh, wow. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Now, you're right. You're right. You've been wanting to fight with us for a long time. You want to fight so bad, you moved to Las Vegas and gambled all your money trying to buy a match with us. You're broke. So you know what? Fresco, Watson, beat these boys down right now. Ice, let's go. Well, there we go. We've if got it. If smoke you want, come get it. It's about to be a barbecue, chump. Oh, okay, now we got a fight going here at the Summer of Champions. So it looks right now, he is Watson, is going to be starting this contest against Malik. Malik, and he is Watson. He is Watson. All right. Well, here we go. Lights, camera, faction now making their tag team debut at the Reality of Wrestling against the former Road Champions, Culture Inc. And it looked, it sounded to me like they had a bit of history here. We know that Culture Inc. started their journey in Las Vegas, and that seems to be exactly where Lights Camera Faction is also from. Apparently, they've made their name all over the West Coast, and they would like to be known as the greatest movie of all time. Well, that, of course, is back in the future. Oh! The hops from Eli. Two. Fresco Matic tried to get inside the ring there. Now, if my notes here are right, Brad, these two are the two longest tenured members of Lights Camera Faction. So they are the ones with the most experience as a tag team. Cover. One, two. You know, who better to test yourself, maybe other than Fly Def, here in the reality of wrestling in your tag team debut, than Culture Inc. Whoa, look at that, Malik. Cover, one, two. He is Watson. Got the right shoulder up. Nick Holiday, the ever vocal third member of Culture Inc. Look at that, oh my gosh. Cover, one, two. He is Watson with some innovative offense and now it just takes a forearm to Eli. Referee needs to get control of this match. Referee, oh wait, hold on here, now the two on one. Fresco Maddock making his way inside the ring as now he is just going crazy. As I think they got the tag there. Well, yeah, referee didn't see it, therefore it shouldn't be a legal tag. Nevertheless, they're going at Malik. Oh, Fresco Matic drops it down. Cover, one, two. Fresco not getting the tag there. As he is Watson, once again the legal man. Double elbow there. Oh, senton elbow combination now One, into the cover. Two. He did a little bit more than that, although that was some impressive offense by Lights Camera Faction. I mean, they're coming all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. 
Now, we do want to send a special shout out to Young Kings Wrestling for sponsoring Culture Inc. here tonight. As right now, it looks like Malik is not holding his well or holding his own very well against Lights Camera Faction, at least thus far. As the big double axe handle comes down on the back there. And the rather rare Let's Go Culture Chance here at the World Gym Arena, Brad. You say rail. Oh. But again, they're defending home court from some my people might say intruders from Las Vegas. He is Watson. I, I am impressed by Lights Camera Faction. Oh. I do hate to admit it. Cover here. One, two. Eli breaking up that pinfall attempt. Continues this matchup as Nahias Watson now goes again for the tag. Fresco, the legal man. Oh, Malik able to escape. Here comes Eli. Eli. Couple of clotheslines. Oh, drop kick. Very few people in this world can do a drop kick by Eli from Culture Inc. from the former champion. Eli Knight coming unglued. That's from the top rope. Oh, wait, close line. Cover, one, two. Almost had him. Two and a half. Oh, big shot there from he is Watson. Getting caught by Eli, though. He's Watson out. Oh, oh my gosh. Full Nelson here. Full Nelson. And it's in. Oh, Eli finds a way out. Eli up and over, lands on the apron. Sunset flip. Holding on. Nick pushes him off, though. Nick Holiday finds his way involved in the for the culture. Cover. One, two, three. Culture Inc. gets the win. Well, they need to call Hunt on this movie tonight. to rewrite the script for this movie that they're writing right now. Well, it's back to the writer's room for Lights Camera Faction. Hey, peace, my brother. Hey, you watching what I'm watching? Yeah, you just saw that, right? So you thinking what I'm thinking, right? Exactly, yo, the competition's stacking up around here, man. Everybody, yeah, right, everybody's jockeying for position and we got the top spot. So they coming for us. We got the targets on our shoulders. Right, bro. Hey, look, you need to come down here, man. We need to talk. We need to go over some strategy, get things together. We need to be fully prepared for this, man. Exactly. All right, cool, man. I'll talk to you in 15, bro. Bet. All right. All right, talk to you later. Roberts, congratulations on defending the championship tonight, but are you really proud with the way you won? Am I proud? If you're, if you're asking me about being proud, then we need to have a talk about what professional wrestling is. This business has never been about being proud. It is about the ends justifying the means, okay? If you want to be proud of your work, let me tell you what you do. Let me tell you what you do. You don't need these anymore. You don't need boots. Just go to your local academy, get you some shooters. That and a clean blood test will let you sit in catering with people that actually make money in this business, okay? Because the wrestling business has never been about being proud of your work and working hard and all that nonsense that everybody spews out. What the wrestling business is about is the ends justify the means. There are Hall of Fames that are filled to the brim with terrible, despicable human beings. 
And we like to pretend that it's just the million dollar corporations, but it's not. Because independent wrestling is the exact same way. You know how I know? Because we just rolled out the red carpet to let a known racist walk right back in our business. So you want to talk to me about being proud? No, I'm not proud. But the ends justify the means. And they always will. JP Harlow, tonight being sponsored by River City Wrestling, is set to go in a rematch against Izzy James, running back from the last time that they ran into each other in the ring. And last time we saw JP Harlow pull off what many called an upset here, defeating Izzy James with a devastating Alabama slam. But JP Harlow is quickly making his name here in the reality of wrestling as one of the talents to watch to maybe have a breakout year. But tonight as we are going to have this rematch one-on-one -on -one between a former longest reigning reality wrestling tag team champion and somebody who many say may have taken Gino Medina to the limit. But the Road Nation really doesn't seem to take a liking to JP Harlow. I would say much to the chagrin, but he seems to just revel in it. Ready to do battle here against Daisy James. by the Green Family and Wrestling with Entertainment. Thank you so much for sponsoring our athletes here at the Reality of Wrestling. If you would like more information about how to sponsor athletes, make sure to check out realityofwrestling.com. As right now, the gutter snake, Izzy James, set to do battle once again with J.P. Harlow. And now Izzy James with the mindset of revenge. He's already down 1-0. He does not want to go down 0-2 against J.P. Harlow. As he is trying to find success here in the singles division after one of the longest reigns as a champion here, Brad. Absolutely, Izzy James. Really primed for a big run as a singles competitor. Wait, hold on here. Wait, what a second. Summer of Champions, Brad. Wow, it's been turned into a no DQ match by our interim general manager, of course, Abel Andrew Jackson, having to take over duties while the litigation between Booker T and Charmel has been going on. That will come to a close at the finale of Summer of Champions here this evening in that big five on five match. But right now, JP Harlow, Izzy James is no disqualification. That's right here, Izzy James trying to get a hold of. JP Harlow, and I think, as I said during their entrances, I call them Hardcore Harlow because that is what he has been known as in, around Texas. Now I think that with the new no disqualification stipulation, I think now is a really good chance for him to show us what he's got as Hardcore Harlow. Well, I mean, uh, JP Harlow didn't look too uh, enthused, really, though, when that match announcement was made. Of course, Hardcore Harlow. You see the allusion to the legend Bob Holly. Bob Holly has competed here for us several times at the reality of wrestling. JP Harlow uses a similar finishing maneuver that he calls the Alabama Slam. Izzy James. Oh man! Oh 
an ST plunge, if you will. Shades of Cactus Jack. And you can see the referee following the action because since this is a no disqualification match, they can go literally anywhere in this arena. Yeah, no DQ, but not falls count anywhere. So they can brawl around the arena if they would like. There's no disqualifications, which means there are no count outs either. But their action has to end there inside the squared circle. And J.P. Harlow has just been dumped over in the audience. Talk about getting your money's worth as the action is now spilling not only to the outside of the ring, but outside of our... Wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Wait a minute. Oh, launches into the crowd. Izzy James launches into the crowd. Incredible. He's taking flight. And they're coming oh. our way, Carby. J.P. Harlow is trying to escape as they're right here in front of us. They're brawling right in front of our announce table. Oh! Right in front of us. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out. Izzy James and J.P. Harlow. Oh! Brawling right in front of us. On our commentary table, watch out. Give me your headset, dummy. Wait, hold on. That's right, it's J.P. Harlow cutting the boots to Izzy James. If there's three things guaranteed in life, it's death, taxes, and J.P. Harlow whooping a hot topic rejects ass. Oh my gosh, well, J.P. Harlow commentating his own match here. Oh, oh wait a minute. Izzy James used a smoke machine on J.P. Harlow. No disqualification, right? And J.P. Harlow, there on the ring in front of us, crawling. Oh! Right there, as now we are back inside the squared circle. And J.P. Harlow, smart, powders out the other side, trying to avoid any more harm. Good to have you back, Kirby. That was uh, a little bit jarring, I will not, I will admit. Oh, wait a minute, is it wait a minute. The better stick. Here, Here he goes. goes. He's gonna take flight. Oh! A cooking sheet. A cooking sheet. J.P. Harlow just took a cooking sheet to the grill. No pun intended. Of Izzy James. You never know what's underneath the ring. As now that's exactly where J.P. Harlow's headed. Is, is that a chain? He's got a chain wrapped around the fist. And they're about to brawl around this ring at him. Hold on, hold on. He's choking him with that chain. And there's no disqualifications. There's nothing that referee Isaac Bouillon can do. J.P. Harlow trying to earn that nickname Hardcore Harlow. The gutter snake inside the ring right now. Izzy James going for a cover here. One, two, and a kick out after two. After all that abuse. I don't think he even knows where he's at right now. The, all the breath may have just been taken out of his body as J.P. Harlow is now just continuing this assault here. Well, Izzy James has been taking a lot of offense here. Oh! To the abdomen. First neck breaker. J.P. Harlow going for a cover. One, two, and a kick out. Look at that. Reverse chin lock. From the man they call Hardcore Harlow. Harlow. This right here gets you more torque on that chin lock, but the gutter snake Izzy James seems to be escaping it rather easily as he just sends J.P. Harlow into the corner. Oh, and he runs right into a cross chop it looked like. And another one. Swing and a miss for Arlo. Lands on his feet. Great reversal there. And now a cross chop of his own to Izzy James. 
Over a buzzsaw kick, but catches him on the backswing. Cover, one, two, and a kick at a two and a half. Is he James still laying there, but now J.P. Harlow going under the ring. What is he looking for? Oh my gosh, it's a trash can. And look at this, he's got candlesticks as well. What other kind of weapons is J.P. Harlow gonna go for? He's got that cooking sheet again. And now, a myriad of different furniture and hardware. And he's playing interior designer of our squared circle. Oh, oh no. Oh. oh my god, you can hear the reverb throughout the arena, Brad. Ladies and gentlemen, just in case you're wondering, that doesn't feel good. Whether it feels good or not, Izzy James is feeling the full effect of that kendo stick as it is being kicked over his neck into that Russian leg sweep. Russian leg sweep with a Singapore cane. Looks like the Sandman covered two and a kick out after two. We're seeing some extreme championship wrestling, if you will, here this evening at the Summer of Champions. It's the biggest event of the summer for a reason here at the Reality of Wrestling. And J.P. Harlow and Izzy James, even though they came into this matchup not expecting a no disqualification stipulation, they're absolutely delivering. Cover one, two. And here at the road, we plan for anything. That's why you had a variety of foreign objects at your disposal. Just sitting there under the ring. Because Kirby, I don't know about you, I never know when I'm gonna need a single pro can. I feel you on that one right there. Is right now oh, the gutter snake wow. firing back on J.P. Harley with some hard shots. Big rights. J.P. Harlow able to counter there. Oh, and a big shot there from Izzy James. Gets him back in it. Can Izzy James capitalize? Is he? Is he? Oh! Sent Arlo right into the trash can. Full force ahead from J.P. Harlow into that trash can. That could have been devastating had Izzy James not moved out of the way. This Izzy James. Macomb thoughts going through his head as he's got that Kendall stick in hand. Uh-oh, looking to wield it. Oh! Revenge oh! is a dish. Best served by Izzy James. I think we're about to get a bit of a duel here. Both men have a kendo stick in hand. Oh! Oh, J.P. Arlo whacked himself with his own Singapore cane. Cover one, two, almost. I really thought that that was a three come right there, but referee Isaac Bouillon said it was only a two, maybe 2.9. Looking for a sharpshooter. But Izzy James catching a boot to the eye. Has him on his back. Look at oh. that Alabama slam. Looking for that Alabama slam. That's how he won the last match to J.P. Harlow. Oh. Both these men have each other scouted. Oh. And there he goes. Gonna go for it. Spinning him around for extra measure of damage. Alabama slam. Cover. One, two. Oh my gosh, and he got his shoulder up. The very maneuver that put him away last time. We talked about it earlier being 2.9. I think that was like 2.999, Brad.
and he throws him over. But Izzy James holding on to that top rope as J.P. Harlow has a little trash talk with the referee. And so looking for again. another. Oh, he's got to go for it again. Got to go for it again. Alabama slam, roll through, cover one, two, kick out. He's looking for it now, sharpshooter, sharpshooter. Is this going to be enough? He's really twisting on the legs and the lower back of JP. JP able to get the rope, but there's no rope breaks in a no disqualification match. No rope break. This could be all. And that's it. After a brutal battle back and forth with Singapore canes, kendo sticks, trash cans, and baking sheets, as well as a feature on commentary from JP Harlow, Izzy James wins the rematch. It no disqualification rules at the Summer of Champions. Kirby carry on the historian. Four executive producers, Booker T and Charmel Hudson, and our director, Kevin Bernhardt. My name is Bo Brad Gilmore. We will see you next week on the Reality of Wrestling.